uh, good morning and uh, a warm welcome from uh, the portal of Alchemy on a lovely sunny day. And uh, um, we have uh, Sunny, Barbara, and uh, Beryl here today. And uh, today, Satsang, we're going to discuss uh, rejection and uh, the path uh, and the lessons uh, that the rejection has for us. But first, we're going to start with uh, drawing some cards. And I drew some cards uh, from the Mermaid and Dalton deck. And I'll send them through. And I asked uh, a spirit for messages uh, for our group. And uh, um, the first card uh, that I drew, and the first message, is alchemy. And it says, uh, you have the Midas touch right now, and every project you begin turns to gold. So it's uh, to embrace the, the alchemist uh, within ourselves, because we all, something that I realized this week, again, is like we all have everything. We, we, we have everything within us. So it's just uh, to tune into those abilities, flex those muscles. Um, back to what it takes to be there. Uh, believe in self, believe in uh, your manifestation abilities. So I can totally reson resonate with that card and the message uh, that it's uh, um, bringing. And then uh, the second card uh, that uh, um, I drew for the group is make a wish. This is a magical moment. Make a wish and enjoy its manifestation. So the first step uh, reminds us that we have this ability to manifest and that we can manifest. The second one says uh, that we need to focus on what we want to manifest and make that wish. Tell the universe exactly what it is uh, that uh, we want. Not that they don't know, but because <laughs> I have been voicing that very clearly but I will be voicing it once again uh, in a wish and meditation very clearly. <laughs> and then the third card that I drew is make a decision. And they say, if you're feeling slack or indecisive, listen to your intuition and make a decision. So there's, there might be something in each of our lives uh, and those that's listening to this message as well, but there's something that we need to make a decision on. Um, and uh, as soon as we do, and be very clear with it, then um, spirit seems to make things fall into place. The thing about all these cards is what is required, yeah, is after that to have faith and trust. That the, the divine plan is just the uh, flowing out and that everything is happening as it should, when it should, how it should, and um, it's to breathe through that. So it's, yeah, the example that uh, comes up uh, to me is like uh, when you're at a restaurant and you order something, the way it comes, uh, you state what you want, and then uh, he goes on his way and he, um, puts in the order. And that's uh, sort of uh, how our angels <laughs> is uh, taking the order to God. Uh, um, but in the restaurant, we just wait until the meal comes. We don't every few seconds, uh, but did you put the order in? <laughs> is there a back order? Or um, uh, when is the order coming? Or is it yeah yet? Or are you sure you've got the right meal ordered there? Or we, we don't do that. So it's a uh, the same enough to um, question uh, the divine timing and uh, um, just uh, have full faith and trust. That is what I get from the cards. Uh, anything you would like to add to that? Or that you get or? I was just thinking for, for all of them, your heritage is from the divine and like you placed your order at the restaurant, you placed your order with the divine. 
it's all there. The timing is right. The meal will be ready at the right time. So let's leave it, leave it like that. We don't have to put in a backup order. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, I was just thinking about the card about making a decision. And that one has been, that thought has been coming up in my head a lot this week. Um, and I actually even said to Mac, um, you know, we have too many options here. And, um, and and we need to decide on one of them and we need to focus on it and, and follow it and not look at any other options or any distractions at all. Just focus on it. Yeah. And um, and we both agreed that that is that is the only way out of our current situation is to is, is to forget about everything else and just focus on what we really need, and um, and make a decision and not talk about anything else at all. So we've agreed to do that. Um, and then um, as, so as the well, universe, I, as the universe is com confused, but you. Busy with this and this and this now. Which one must we help you with? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and then and then something else, something else will pop up. And then we'll be talking about that. And then it just takes our focus off what we really should be doing, which is one thing only. Yeah. So um, yeah, I think we've got that this week, and, then, and we and we're doing it. And um, and then of course with the asking. As, as Beryl said, we don't need to keep asking over and over and over again. And the universe knows exactly what we need. Um, if, if we're in touch with the universe, which we are. So um, we, as Beryl said, it's just a question of patiently waiting for everything to be happening for the highest good of everyone. So we just trust and believe actually, because hope is a form of fear. So trust and believe. Now, I was thinking, they say um, you mustn't have a plan B. Because if you have a plan B, then you're distracting from plan A. So always stick with plan A. Yeah, because then it means that plan A, you're already thinking, well, that might not happen. Uh -huh. mm. And so you're not really trusting if you've got a plan B. Yeah, yeah fear based. Mm -hmm. Repeat your plan B. If you've got plan A, or something better is plan B. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Whatever the universe thinks is the something better. Yes. Mm. That's yeah. nice. Yeah. But I, I, yeah. And, and, and sometimes we think we have to settle and uh, can just take less and be less or make ourselves smaller or make our dreams smaller or make our wishes smaller. Mm. And it's all test. Can you still persist uh, with, without that belief? So, um, and it's to trust our instincts and our intuition. But uh, it ultimately leads us um, uh, to the right place. To our dreams. And we, we will know how it feels like. We will know what it looks like. Um, Can I just add something? It's a funny story because um, I, when I was trying to find the husband, um, you know, I'd always had a, a thought of what I wanted, but like when I started my manifestation journey, you know, they always said you must have a list and be precise. So I literally wrote down a list of like possibly like 10 items, <laughs> like a checklist of what I wanted and I put it out to the universe. And I still have a chuckle to this day because I stuck to that list and I wasn't going to compromise. And then my husband came along and he basically ticked off all those little items that I asked for. And today I'm like, well, that's my thing. I just, I've got to be precise because, you know, if you don't say, you know, you just want something and it's got to be kind of like that, it doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah, you can't settle for second best, especially with a husband. No. <laughs> <laughs> I waited long enough for him eh, to be right. <laughs> so uh, we're talking about the uh, rejections and the pathway to gratitude, self-love, and uh, self-acceptance. 
So I want you just to, to go through this exercise with me. I want you just to, to think about the, the events or the experiences uh, or um, the things that has happened in your life uh, where you've equated it to rejection. So the rejection is very much a perception that we have about a situation. It, a situation happens and then we go dot, 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 uh, thus we were rejected. And uh, I, with my recent <laughs> uh, set of rejections, I had to sit in rejection and now really, and then I, it's, a, it's like when you hit the nail on the head, when you truly get it, it's like you can change the dynamic of that. So I was uh, going back in my life and saying, okay, so where has the rejection showed up? Because after, after each experience, I would be so hot sore. And then I thought, but why am I hot sore? And then I realized, oh, it's because I feel rejected. So then I thought, okay, so where have I felt rejected? And then I remembered okay, when I was uh, uh, doing a family constellation, I realized that my mom was five months pregnant and then only found out the, um, that I was there. Um, and then she wasn't married, so there was a big hoo-ha of, oh, um, pregnant uh, without being married, uh, it's a shame to the family. And there was a lot of family fights, so there was family feuds and it didn't feel, it felt like I was rejected by my environment, by the ones uh, that uh, were supposed to love me, uh, before I was even born. So I picked up and felt that. Then um, being rejected in the, the marriage, uh, being rejected as a partner, being rejected as, there's not another facet of my life where I haven't experienced rejection everywhere. So I can just see rejection, 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 and it's as it builds up of rejection. Rejection uh, is then locked. So I thought, okay, so I need to shift the dynamic of reje rejection. I need to see a different perspective. Because it's just an illusion. Everything on this planet Earth is an illusion. We believe it so wholeheartedly because we to prove it with our experiences, but it's still an illusion. So I thought, okay, so what is this illusion trying to teach us? And then I said, see, okay, on the introspection, I saw that, okay, what I've noticed is the rejected becomes the rejector while unconscious or as a defense mechanism, meaning, if you've been rejected in your life in certain aspects, um, either by uh, work or by this or by that, whatever it is uh, that there's been more than one rejection, a build up of rejection, we tend to reject those experiences. I'm talking to uh, about myself. So, okay, I won't go there then. I'll go somewhere else or I'll do something else or I'll prioritize something else. And I found that, that with myself, I, I rejected parts of life and parts of experiences until it all just uh, came back where I have made myself smaller and like, okay, I'll just then experience this and I'll just allow this and I'll just allow this. And I realized uh, that I uh, only allowed myself to do my work um, and nothing else because of uh, the wounding of uh, carrying uh, the rejection. And I realized, okay, so I've, I've actually become the rejector of life and life experiences and uh, even of my own life. So it's like that which we don't like others uh, that have done to us, we then uh, treat ourselves in that way. And uh, I realized, okay, so all my thoughts uh, that comes up uh, when I feel in this rejected state and say, okay, I just want to go home or anything. I just want to go out of here. <laughs> That's not the purpose. Um, that is me becoming 
the rejector of uh, this life experience and not appreciating what I have and uh, the gift of life that I was given and, and so forth. So, and the, so it's to become aware that that which we don't like, we actually become if we don't conscientize it. So just, um, it's, a, it's to become aware of the stories that you tell yourself when there's a rejection. Because everything is not as it seems. And it's as if in the, in the beginning stage of our life, we are like the hangman. We turned uh, we, our heads down and our feet is up. And in life, we need to sh turn it 180 degrees on its head so that we can see the truth. So all, most of the, our beliefs, the opposite is actually the truth. So there's two sides to it, but it's uh, to see it as a whole and see it as a, as a complete. To change our, perspect our perspective, so it's to change our life. That's uh, why Wayne Dwyer says, when you change uh, the way you look at things, the things you look at changes. But we need to change it. So it, 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 this exercise uh, can be done with every, every negative emotion. It's not just a rejection. I'm just um, naming it today so that those that, that are struggling with rejection, being laid off at work or going through a divorce or going through something uh, where they feel not good enough or not worthy or just um, there's something wrong with them. The feelings of there must be something wrong with me being rejected. What am I doing wrong? What am I being wrong? And I really had to just sit and look at it. So if we're not good enough for them, it's uh, they that are actually not uh, good enough for us. So we don't always see that it's uh, uh, the situation that's not good enough for us. So everything is uh, on vibrations. Everything has to do with vibrations and everything operates at the different vibrational fre frequencies. So when the uh, vibrations align and they're like, uh, there is uh, um, a meeting of the minds, a meeting of the souls, a meeting of um, energetic, and you either um, are happy in the work or you have been in a relationship or something is working in your life because the energies have come together. When there's a shift in the dynamic, a shift, and the one is vibrating at another frequency than the other, then there's a mismatch. Then uh, it dissolves. Either the job comes to the end, the relationship comes to the end, or something naturally comes to an end. Because it's not meeting one another at the same frequency, at the same uh, vibration. Now, when that happens, it doesn't matter what the reason is. Because different reasons are given for this, okay? In the actual truth and fact is that there's just a mismatch. There's a misalignment, and that's why it's, it's, it's not working anymore. But sometimes when somebody has to voice to another, let them down, or let them down gently, or let them down <laughs> abruptly, or play the blame game, or whatever, there's 101 excuses. And I tend to find that people will say, but why did that happen? Why did it come to an end? Why did There's a lot of whys. And that, uh, when we were children, I mean, uh, uh, traveling in the car, we'll ask parents, uh, why this, why this, why this? Because the mind wants to know why. And so uh, the, the, the reasons given is not always the, the reasons, the true reasons. If a, if a partnership uh, um, ends, uh, one say, oh, but you don't love me anymore, something like that, or this or that, or make 101 excuses. But it's not always uh, the reason. The reason, I want to say the reason, it's not always the reason. Sounds paradoxical, but it's a, there's a higher reason behind it. And the, the true thing is, it's just not aligning. And it's not to find it, not to try and put it together when it's not supposed to be together, because you need to find that that which is at your vibration. And we keep on changing. And that's why circumstances will change or other things will change or partnerships will change. 
it's a, to, to allow it to be at your vibrational frequency. Don't drop, don't become less than, and say, oh, uh, I was too much, or I don't lower self or lower standards. Yeah, I was actually thinking about rejection. And um, if I have learned, I mean, I've had loads of rejection in my life, and as everybody probably has. And I used to blame myself always. It was always me that was at fault. I didn't do something right. It was me, me, me. And, but now that I'm older, I can see how each one of those rejections has led to something better yes. as my life has gone by. Yes. yes. And, um, and so now um, I felt a little bit rejected the other day, you know, when, when we all changed to Telegram. And I asked a few people to to join me on Telegram. And most people did, but two people didn't. And they gave me a whole heap of reasons why they weren't going to, which wasn't the point <laughs> at all. <laughs> um, but anyway, they obviously thought they needed to. And, and then I thought, you know, I really don't care. And I left those two groups and, re and basically rejected them because I know there's nothing wrong with me. I, I now know. There's nothing wrong with me. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so the rejection, I rejected the rejectors. I walked away. And um, and that's, I think, what I'm going to be doing for the rest of my life. If I feel rejected, it isn't me anymore. So it comes down to self-love. Yes. 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 Wonderful. I'm so yes. glad you learned that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing the same now. Good. We, we, I guess everything builds up to a, a, a climax, to a, a point where you say, okay, no more. Okay, I, can't, I have to see this differently because I don't want to experience the feel bad feeling. So it, but it's a, it's, it irks you and it irritates you and it pokes at you and it prods you until you get it. And it's just to get it. And when you've got it, then you can have it for life. Because uh, when the, when that when that belief system has changed, it changes your life. It changes your outlook on life, your experience with life. And uh, again, it's uh, one of the um, uh, patterns uh, that I've saw uh, is that in the, the beginning we do we we blame ourselves and we think there's something wrong with us and uh, and uh, we reject actually who we are. But it is all designed for self-love and self-acceptance. But and yeah. then to have gratitude for each one that I've rejected, as you say, because you ended up with something better. So it's just to, I want to say, overcome that. If if there's a perception of rejection, oh yes, it's not rejection. Already change the story, and 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 look for what is it. There's something better, and believe that. And so that belief just needs to solidify for each yeah. one. Yeah. In the, one of the sessions that I did the, this uh, week, it was also very profound because uh, the client uh, got uh, the aha moment of, oh, I choose this. Because we do choose each and every experience. There's nothing with, that we don't choose. Nothing, as I said last week, is done uh, to us or against us, it's done for us, for us to wake up, hello, <laughs> there's something better, and uh, I guess uh, that is where with the cards uh, and the messages uh, that we keep on uh, saying today is there's something better, and it's uh, to, to, to have uh, that attitude and that outlook and that, uh, that bondage point, because everything is um, part of the, the self-mastery, when we come here to South, poor self-mastery. Everything isn't given to us in a silver plate and say, okay, you don't have to do anything. <laughs> There's experiences so, so that you can brush up your skills on forgiveness, on seeing things differently, on having gratitude, getting back to compassion, uh, uh, having self-love, and then just sharing it. And uh, everything is just designed, uh, are you going to fall for it? Are you going to believe this lie um, uh, this is like going to continue. 
and uh, it's just for us to change that. Also to realize not to outsource anything that is an inside job. <laughs> yeah. We are so used to wanting others to do it. So no one is there to save you but you. No one is there to love you but you. No one is there to accept you but you. No, one, no one can punish you but you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. No one can appreciate you but you. No one to care for you but you. Value you but you. So it always starts with you. And yeah, um, we that punisher of us, <laughs> the only one that can stop punishing us and stop torturing us is us. And we need yeah. to realize, oh, what do we need to foster in our mindset, in our beliefs, in our self-talk to start acting that way? Because um, uh, rejection always says, there's a, there's a different relationship for me, place for me, job for me, purpose for me. That is, that is all it says. And I had this epiphany <laughs> in 2007 when I went on E. Martini's breakthrough experience and he says, okay, take a person that has done something wrong against you and write down all their qualities. There was a, such and such and such and such and such. So we can virtue up and he says, okay, now own each of those qualities. So whatever you said that that person is, you have to own those negative traits and remember five people that you've done that to. Because we can't recognize something within someone else if, if it's not within us. But we say, no, 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 we're not like that. <laughs> uh, but we are. And uh, uh, after that, he says, you'll have your breakthrough when you can have a tear of gratitude for that person coming to play the role in the murder that they've been. And that November, mentally, spiritually, I got it. I could understand it. The next year, February, my emotional body got caught on <laughs> and I had my tear of gratitude when I said to the, uh, for this co corporate job, I handed my resignation and I said, thank you. But then I thought you were standing in my way from going up, but there wasn't. There was just another way for me. I now see it. And uh, that is, uh, so sometimes we think something is perfect. Why should it change? But uh, we keep on evolving and improving. So allowing something better. I was thinking about what you put on the, on the portal group, um, the particular one where I asked God to help me grow. And God said, no, it's up to you, but I will do some pruning. Yes. And I think um, that's what a lot of this all is, is pruning to make you stronger, to make us all stronger. Yes. Each and every apparent misfortune or it, it has a message. Yeah, it yes. absolutely does. Mm. Yes. And I, I, I also think, getting back to what Crown said on a channeling I was listening to last night, is for COVID, we think it's done so much wrong to us. But if you look at the blessings it's done for so many of us, um, where we've been able to leave jobs that no longer suit us, a lot of people have gone on their own and it's been absolutely wonderful and it's taken them out of the stress and let them be free. And... I, I just looked at it even for myself, having to leave because I was no longer comfortable and felt terrible. But it's the best thing that really happened to me was to say, that's the past, now let's go forward. So I, th I think gratitude must come into it when you see what you think someone has done, as you say, and you branch off and you become a new branch with new leaves and new... It's lovely. It is. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's for us to forgive the self, to forgive all the rejectors in life, to realize uh, that uh, they just are leading us to gratitude, 
self-love and self-acceptance. Um, and watch out that we haven't be, uh, um, uh, we haven't turned into the rejectors and reject before we get rejected in whatever facet of life that there is. Don't reject your dreams because it hasn't happened yet or reject uh, um, your wishes or reject anything good because they, you don't think it's, it's, it's possible anymore. I, I think a lot of people are tired, exhausted, uh, like a dog chasing its tail, but we need to realize what is the, that energy of uh, chasing your tail? What is it uh, that you're chasing after? And sometimes it's in the not doing that we create it. We think that we have to do. And if we don't do, say so for instance, you want, I want me to manifest a house now. Do you think you have to go and look for properties? Because if you don't look, keep on looking for properties, you're not going to find it. But sometimes when you more relaxed energies, it just, uh, dun, 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 it just happens and you know, you're at the right time, at the right place, meeting the right people and it just happens. So it's uh, the energy that you bring into your manifestations. Is it uh, relaxed uh, with trust or is it manic and I have to overdo, overthink, over, over, overwork because then I'm going to make it work. I want you just to explore in your heads and in, 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 in your life what energy are you busy with? Um, acceptance or rejecting what is happening now? So there's, a, there's always a gift in what is happening now. Any uncomfortable situation, there's a gift. There's a lesson here. There's something to be grateful for. Um, and we tend to find fault and um, or blame. Or, and as soon as... As soon as we put any energy outside of ourselves, we, we can't transmute it. We have to bring it inside, recognize that it's inside, transmute it on the inside, and then it manifests on the outside. Yeah, I think maybe fear is also a form of, of rejecting the good things that um, that are in, you know, that are available to us. If yeah. we... I know what you mean by by doing things, by overdoing things, thinking that the more you do to help yourself, the better it's going to be. <laughs> um, and I've always been a little bit like that. But um, as you say, if it's there, and it is there, because we know it's there, then you don't really have to do anything. Yeah. Except get yourself there to, to view the cottage in your case <laughs> and, and, and sign the lease. That's all you have to do. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Okay. Anything else? To, anyone of you want to end off with this rejection story or can see it differently? No. I, I'm just loving the way that you're saying that you must turn your thing around because, um, you know, when you are rejected and you feel down, you know, what you said just now touched with me like so well and you know when you said oh you must um so no it's not me it's them and so many times in life you know i've like always thought oh it's me it's me yeah maybe it's not <laughs> but it's not to the other you know you forget um so to hear it again it really makes you know a wow moment for me this morning <laughs> good yeah yeah, okay. it's 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 a, a lot to do with how we treat ourselves afterwards, mm. um, and the stories that we spin a, 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 a about that, um, and it's just to become aware of. Okay, so if I am the manifester, what am I now manifesting? So if you feel rejected and you become the rejector. You're not going to align with that energy. So it's to raise your vibration again and uh, get your self-acceptance and self-love again and then manifest. When we're at a lower frequency, best would not manifest anything. <laughs> but you'll just uh, manifest a follow-up experience. As I said, uh, it's like if you have to go through 
say, a rejection in the relationship. So there's a thousand guys standing on the line that will come and teach you this lesson uh, that there's nothing wrong with you. But while you believe one after the other, it's like uh, it will irk you and it will become more and the, the, the names and faces will change, but the energy will be the same. The lesson will be the same. When you get it, and you realize, oh, okay, all I need to do is this. So there's another line of experiences with the total different um, outcomes. We just need to get it. We just need to understand it. And it's a, and it boils down to everything is not as it seems, and it's usually the opposite. The opposite is true, not what we told ourselves. And it's you know, this year being a year of communication and releasing all live programs as uh, they can come up, we're going to talk about it. And we're just going to alchemize each of them until uh, it, it no longer exists in our reality. Because if you can see a thing for illusion, you can't see it as the truth anymore. To be realized that, oh, it's actually just poof. It's not there. It is, um, it's just uh, disappeared. So when everybody just become comfortable. Closing your eyes, breathing in deeply and exhaling fully. Becoming more and more relaxed, more and more ease, more and more at peace. Digging in a few slow deep breaths. Expand your low abdomen as you breathe in. And contract your low abdomen as you breathe out. So allow this tone, this vibration, this frequency to go in through and around your body as you just relax. Wherever there has been disharmonious uh, feelings or energies uh, within you or within your environment this past week, just detach, release, and let go. The surrender and the release, surrender and release, surrender and release. Let it all go, set it all free, let it all be. Just for a moment, detach yourself from everything. When you just to visualize yourself stepping into the most beautiful garden, lush green grass, flowers, birds, butterflies, tall trees uh, with a river flowing through it. Becoming aware of the beautiful ferns within this forest garden setting. And finding your pathway to walk on. You follow the pathway. The sacred part within this forest. We choose there to go and sit on. Sit out. Finding yourself sitting under 
a tall majestic green absorbing of the wisdom from the ancients Pulling in your highest teachers and guides to, to join you now. Whatever it is in your life that you need to make a decision on, uh, use your benevolent team uh, to make uh, an informed decision. Whatever information it is uh, that you are needing for it, ask for those questions and see what comes up for you. Wherever there's been a confusion uh, with many options, choose the right option for you now, the one you really want. What is it uh, that you would like to manifest? Voice it now to your benevolent team. And allow yourself uh, permission uh, to shift your vibrational frequency, your energy levels to match that which you are wishing for, that which you'd like to manifest. Allow yourself to be recalibrated and realigned to that which is better for you.
embracing your sense of worthiness, knowing that you are worthy of this, receiving this, having this. Allowing Spirit to, to remove all the obstacles uh, that you've placed. And believe uh, that it is uh, difficult or impossible or whatever it is. Just become aware of uh, any self-fulfilling prophecies of what you place in between you and your wish. With a few deep breaths now, I want you to breathe in your trust and faith in the divine, in the divine plan, and in uh, the divine timing. Increase your trust and faith question now. You are starting a new cycle, a new way of being, living, thinking, acting, reacting. Just allow your vibration to align with this new cycle. Say this wish fully manifested in this now. See yourself experiencing uh, your manifestation and how it feels for having already manifested. Feel yourself fully enjoying uh, your manifestation and the deep satisfaction that it gives you. Feel it within each fiber of your being.
I truly have a deep sense of gratitude for every experience, every rejection that led you to this uh, now moment, that led you to your manifestation. Be grateful that all the nose has fallen away and was there purely to lead you to this manifestation. And you just absorb uh, the love and support that you have from your benevolent team, from God and the angels. Breathing in more self-love and more self-acceptance and knowing your self-worth. Now just fully trust uh, your intuition, your intuitive prompts, your intuitive feelings to create the synchronicities for you to be at the right time, at the right place, meeting the right people and manifesting uh, your heart's true desires. Co-creating the service the divine with the highest good of all. Surrender it and leave it with spirit. Feel yourself going back into your body, back into this now, back into this room. Then visualize the most beautiful silver, golden bubble of light. Coming down the front of your body, the back of your body, the left side and the right side of your body and gently tuck it beneath your feet, two feet below you. I visualize the grounding cord, any color of your choosing. 
taking a deep down into the earth, into the crystal heart of Mother Earth. I feel this crystalline energy is coming back up your grounding cord and into your silver golden bubble of light. Feel your connection uh, as above, so below. Sending in your beautiful energy. Then rotate your hands, rotate your feet, stretch and make sure that you're properly back into your body. And when you are, you may open your eyes. And I would love you to share what you experienced in your meditation today. Shall I start first? Yes. <laughs> okay, so part of my rejection that I was dealing with from last week was... Um, I was trying to get my, you know, I'm doing these superhero capes for these cancer children. So I tried to partner up with another company who's doing these little gifts for children as well. And um, so she was on board and then she pulled away and she was going to order some and then I was going to donate some to her as well. And then she said, I oh, know, Crazy Store had given her a whole lot of capes and she didn't want mine anymore. So that was my rejection from last week. So I thought, oh, you know, what, what's, where am I going now? So like, as I said, this whole discussion today was actually quite apt. That obviously maybe I'm meant to be doing my own thing. I'm not piggybacking on someone else. Maybe there's something better for me. So the whole meditation now was that they're confirming that. And, you know, just, um, yeah, they're there. And, yeah, that's my team. <laughs> I have to trust in them. Yes. Wonderful. I'm very glad. Perfect. Anybody else who would like to share what they've experienced in the meditation? Barbara? She's to unmute herself. Okay. I started with a, a list of things that I would like to manifest. And then... And then amongst them was peace of mind. And then I started thinking about all the other things. And I realized, or I didn't realize, but the beings told me, that peace of mind is all that really matters. <laughs> um, <laughs> because, I mean, you know, money, security, good health, all of those things. If you don't have peace of mind, then then it's it's not worth anything. So, but if you have peace of mind, you have it all anyway. So that was the message that I got. Peace of mind is the thing I need to manifest. Beautiful. Yeah. And it's to realize that the, the peace of mind is already there. You just need to choose it. It's so that make a decision. Hmm decision exactly. to have peace of mind and to exactly. be in peace of mind. doesn't matter who, what shakes, rattles and rolls, still have peace of mind. So yeah. it's, it's to, I want to say, be a living meditation of peace of mind. Let the peace of mind be with you when you walk, uh, with you when you have discussions, with you when you drive the car with you when you're in the shower, just continually, the only option to make is I opt for peace of mind. And yeah. living that. And that's where I realize I have it all. Yeah. 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 All righty. That's a beautiful um, affirmation to end off with. And it, it, it is so, because it's in our peace of mind that we create all this also. It's like mm -hmm. when we have the worrying mind and think, but what can go wrong or how bad can it get? Or okay. That is uh, totally <laughs> the <laughs> way we miscreate and miss uh, fire and uh, misalign and miss everything. It's in the peace of mind that, that uh, everything starts to fall into place. So it's, mm -hmm. a, and it's beautiful because it's a, if you bring that energy to the world, it just 
happens uh, a lot more easily. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you every for, everyone for joining. I see Miki also says thank you. So I wish you a beautiful peace of mind week. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, may your manifestations uh, um, happen uh, as uh, they should. And uh, may you have um, uh, peace just of mind. Peace of mind. Peace of mind. <laughs> <Too. laughs> thank you. Thanks, Thank Fiona. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.